with Nemanja, questions for Nemanja, um, because you need to go get off and do the interview. So we'll start with Simon Stone. Hi, uh, Nemanja, hope you're okay. Um, what What is the feeling ahead of uh, this game? Obviously, you're already through, you've won the group, but you've got a new manager to impress. What's the feeling amongst the players for this game? Yeah, I think that you already gave the answer for that. We, we have to, to try to impress the manager. We have to try to show that, that we deserve to play and it's a great opportunity for everyone. Uh, yeah, uh, we are true. We, we are uh, at the top of the group, but we, we want to finish in the best possible way with the three points uh, in front of our supporters at Old, at Old Trafford. And uh, as I said, it's a great opportunity for us to show our qualities and, and to try to show the, the manager uh, that we have quality to play and that we deserve to play, of course. And Ransom? Hi, Nemanja. What is the biggest impact that the man sat to your left has had since he's walked through the door? Uh, every manager has his ideas, of course, and uh, we always try to, to adapt and to understand uh, as soon as possible his ideas. Uh, I think that everyone saw, uh, saw a bit of, of his idea last game against uh, Crystal Palace of that um, High pressing uh, of, of that organization when we defend uh, and when we attack, of course. So obviously we are we are training uh, with him only a couple of days, and uh, we didn't have enough time to to understand more of this. But uh, we could see in the last couple of days the way we want to play, and uh, I'm sure in the future the team will. We'll, uh, we'll play more in his way. And as I said, he's, after a couple of days, it's very difficult. But uh, I'm sure, uh, step by step, everyone will see his ideas on the pitch. Because as I said, uh, we still have to understand everything, uh, what he wants from us. James Sabundra. The manager, do you feel like the confidence is back amongst the squad, having strung together four really important results after a really challenging period before that? Of course, when you when you win games, is uh, is easier. The, the confidence is back. Of course, um, yeah, I think that uh, that momentum is very important. We have to carry on. We have to to go game by game. And I always like to say that the next game is the most important. So for me, tomorrow is uh, is another final. So uh, yeah, we have to carry on. We have to know what, what we did well in the last couple of games, where we made mistakes to improve that and uh, to perform in the best possible way the next one. Andy Mason. Hi, Nemanja. Can, can I ask you about um, Fred and Scott McTominay, two players who play in a, a similar position to you? I know that they've looked up to you, you they've benefited from your experience. What's your relationship like with them? How do you see them both as players and, and how they're doing? Yeah, I think that they're, first of all, uh, great people, uh, great people for changing room, uh, very important players for, for our team. They improve a lot game by game. Um, they don't get enough price because uh, always uh, people who are scoring goals get get price after the games, but uh, uh, sooner or later they will get uh, what they deserve. And uh, I think that that uh, game by game they're better and better. Uh, they give us stability, so they have to just continue to work in in this way. And I'm sure that they will have a bright future. Okay, thank you, Nemanja. We'll now move on to the manager. Thank you. Thank you. I will start with Simon Peach. Hi, Ralph. Um, just wondering, we, can we expect a lot of changes tomorrow, perhaps all 11? And can you provide us with some injury updates? We saw Cavani, Varane, Shaw and Lingard training today. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't finally decided, to be honest, but uh, yeah, I think uh, it definitely makes sense that we will rest a few players uh, due to the um, crowded fixture list over the next few, few few weeks and months. We need to make sure that we have 
um, yeah, as much um, recovered players as possible also for the Premier League. Um, but on the other hand, of course, we, we need to keep the positive momentum and um, uh, our ethos is to win games, uh, even if we may be playing with a few, uh, a few new players and fresh players, it's still, it's still important that we win the game. And by the way, the first game in this group, um, we lost uh, at Young Boys, and so we still need to make up for that. Uh, and uh, it's clear, with, no matter with which kind of players we will start tomorrow, we definitely want to win the game. David McDonald. Uh, hi, Ralph. Just uh, uh, two questions, if, if I may. Um, you, you talked about the intensity in the high pressing game, and I think on Sunday you said it was impossible to play at the level at which the players started. Is it fair to say then that the players, despite obviously being fit and, and, and top class athletes, have to find an extra level of fitness to, to, to play um, at the level that you demand in terms of that high intensity game? Well, I mean, if, if I look back to the game against Crystal Palace, uh... I don't think that we lacked energy in the second half. Obviously, the first half hour was uh, almost almost perfect, I would say. It was impressive, uh, the way that we pressed all over the pitch. Uh, actually, I didn't expect the team to do that uh, on this kind of level. Um, and in the second half, it was not that high tempo intensity that we played in the first half, but still we controlled the game. So there was not much that we allowed them we give away any any opportunities to, to Crystal Palace. So I don't see any any physical issues. But of course, in order to play like that, it's important that you make sure that for every game that we are playing, and there are no easy games, not in the Premier League, not in the FA Cup, not in the Champions League. So we need to make sure that we are as fresh as possible. Chris Whelan? Yes, hi Ralph. Um, your old friend Thomas Tuchel won this um, trophy last year after four months at Chelsea. Um, similar situation to Di Matteo in 2012. Were those seasons unique in their own way or is something like that feasible with the squad that you have now? I think it's too early now. Uh, I think been here only for a week now together with the team and played one game. Um, I think it's too early, but uh, obviously with a club like Manchester United, we are ambitious to be as successful as, as we can be in all competitions, no matter in which one. Um, and for me, it's important that we develop the team, that we continue the application of, of, of the defensive processes and fine-tune our collective defending. Um, and uh, right now, with playing every three days, it has to happen sort of in-game um, and obviously all, also in talking to the players in, in video feed footage sessions. Uh, we did that before the Crystal Palace game and we will also do that before the game tomorrow against Young Boys and our next feature uh, away at Norwich. Paul Hurs. Hey Ralph, is, um, is managing in the Champions League one of the reasons why you took this job? You know, it's such a prestigious competition. Was, is it a good chance for you to test yourself again against um, the other best managers in the world? Well, as you know, uh, as a young student, I studied English at, at university and I also al already spoke about that in, in the first press conference. Uh, and since then, I, there has always been a special relationship and a special interest uh, on my part uh, regarding England and English football. Um, and yes, when when the offer or the proposal or the invitation came from Manchester United, for me it was a no-brainer. I had to, I had to accept that and to do that because uh, it's as I said one of the biggest clubs in the world. Uh, a lot of good players here already, and uh, being able to work with them now for six months um, is something that I couldn't possibly turn down. Brent Caldera. Hi, Ralph. Um... I know that success is a, is a concept very, very hard to define, especially in football. It depends on many contexts. But what, what would be a success for you this season at Man United? For me, success can only be achieved with, develop, with development, developing the team. Um, this is uh, the result of development. And uh, if we can develop the team in the next six, months in a way that I can see them play and I think quite a few things uh, could already be seen last Saturday knowing that it was Sunday knowing that it was only one game and the first game 
but uh, it showed how the team could defend if they work together as a team. Um, and obviously, there is still space for improvement. Not anything has, not everything has been perfect in that game. We can still improve in possession of the ball. We can create more chances. We can be more flexible on the ball. We could play more vertical on the ball. But um, uh, we spoke about that in the first press conference. If you look at the uh, number of goals that we conceded until last Saturday, and uh, I heard today that it was the first clean sheet at Old Trafford since April. Um, six months, no clean sheet in, in your own stadium. This, uh, for me, it was clear where the priorities should be and how, how we should develop the team in the next couple of weeks. But I'm fully aware that uh, in order to be at the end successful, which means hopefully playing Champions League next season, being as, as successful as we can be in the Champions League and in the FA Cup. We didn't get an easy draw, to be honest, against Aston Villa. We played them two times within one week. Uh, it's one of three direct uh, Premier League duels uh, in the FA Cup. So there were a few easier uh, draws uh, possible, but um, in the end, it's like another Premier League game. And this is exactly how we'll how we will approach this game. And Ransom. Hi Ralph. Um, could you bring us up to date on your coaching team and tell us you know, your thinking behind any personnel that you are currently in the process of bringing in? Yes, uh, it won't be that many. Um, so far, I'm very happy to work uh, with the staff I have uh, met last week, and they gave me a lot of help in the last couple of couple of days in preparation of, of the Crystal Palace game. Um, we have decided to bring in a sport psychologist um, with Sasha Lenze. Uh, he's from Germany. He's a former second division player. I have worked with him for three years. Uh, I used to work with him for three years at uh, at Leipzig. Um, one year in the year that we won promotion from the second to the first division myself, and in the following two years when Ralph Hasen Little was head coach and Sean Löw, the current assistant coach of Thomas Tuchel, was his assistant coach. So we know each other since then, um, and uh, yeah, he will be introduced to the team as soon as he's got his visa and uh, work permit. So I very much hope that we will have him on board uh, either tomorrow or at the latest on Thursday. And um, I will also have one other assistant coach with Chris Armas. Chris Armas used to be the assistant coach uh, at the New York, New York Red Bulls uh, under under Jesse Marsh. Uh, that was five years ago when I first met him. Since then, we have met quite frequently. Also in my role as uh, head of global for Red Bull, um, in the last three years, three and a half years, he was head coach, uh, also head coach for the New York Red Bulls uh, and, uh, uh, and for Toronto in the MLS. And he will again, hopefully, uh, be able to join us in our team in the next two days. Samuel Lockers. Hi, Ralph. Um, Dean Henson and Donny van der Beek are two prominent international players who've fallen out of their international squads due to lack of playing time this season. Uh, what are your plans for those players? And would you be open to letting either of them go on loan in January? Well, to start with, they will both play tomorrow. They will both play in the first 11. Um, and uh, as you as you saw, Donny was uh, came on as a sub last last Saturday, uh, last Sunday. Uh, and I know that Dean is, is a very, very good, ambitious goalkeeper. But we definitely need two goalkeepers. We have even three with Tom um, and with, uh, 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 with Grant. We have a fourth one, so we have four goalkeepers, but I would say we have the three goalkeepers who will really come into the recognition for the first team. And um, yeah, as I said, I have to get to know the players first in the next couple of weeks uh, in order to finally assess them. Right now, I'm more than happy to have all of them on board and I will try to give them as much game time as possible. Simon Stone. Hi, uh, um, Ralph. Could you just go back to my colleague's question right at the start? Cavani and Varane in particular, are they able to play yet? And obviously they're pl two players of huge experience. How much do you think they can add to your squad when, when they are available? Yeah, they both cannot play tomorrow, but um, 
they were part of the training session today. Uh, uh, Eddie, even yesterday, uh, for Rafa, it was the first time that he was on the pitch together with the team. If everything goes well, I expect both of them back in full training next week. So hopefully Monday next week they will be uh, they will be participating in all training sessions. I mean, and obviously they are both top players. Uh, of course, we would uh, uh, we would be happy to have them on board as soon as possible, but especially with Rafa and his injury record in the past, we need to make sure that we will have him until the end of the season. So it's also about sustainability and not only getting him fit as soon as possible. Um, and yes, it would be great to have both players uh, available uh, as soon as possible, but as I said, if possible for the rest of the season. Neil Custis? Um, I know you've, you've watched a lot of Man United from, from afar. Uh, Jesse Lingard's a player who's had an impact in the past and when he comes on as a substitute. Do you see him as someone who can have a future under you? As I said, everybody has the chance to perform and should and present himself. That's why I'm happy to, to give game time to quite a few of those players tomorrow to see them under pressure in the Champions League game in front of hopefully 70, 75,000 in a, in a sold out stadium. So this is a perfect opportunity to get to know the players, like I did last Saturday, last Sunday against Palace with the others. Um, we've only had a week of training so far, and uh, with every impression, with every training session, with every every opportunity to see them play in competitive games, I will get to know them better. Bill Rice. Hi, Ralph. Um, can you give us an update on Anthony Martial's condition? He didn't seem to be training. Anthony trained with us on Saturday in the final training session before the Crystal Palace game, and uh, half an hour after training, the doctor and the medical department informed me that he has some pain on his knee. Uh, we had a meeting together with uh, the doctor, with the medical department and, and, and Anthony, and we agreed that he should try to recover from that. It's not a fresh injury, it's, uh, it's uh, symptoms that he had in the past already, so we need to make sure that he is uh, uh, reducing the amount of pain in the next couple of days and hopefully have him back in training again next week. Jamie Jackson. Hi, Ralph. Um, you mentioned about, or you're, or you're introducing pressing, you mentioned you're bringing a psychologist. I mean, how surprised are you that you have to bring this to a club or Manchester United status? Because surely the, both of these elements are kind of the very basic you need to have any chance of winning trophies. Actually, I don't know the situation, what the situation is like in England and other clubs. In Germany, in the last couple of years, most clubs clubs have employed a sports psychologist or mental coach, whatever you, you would like to call them. For me, it, it is absolutely logical. I even had somebody like this, Hans-Dieter Hamann, the current uh, um, sports psychologist of the German national team uh, back in 1998. In whom we were probably first club in Germany who has ever employed a sports psychologist in him. Um, for me, it's only a, que a question of logic. I mean, if you have special coaches for goalkeeping, for physical education, for uh, even for strikers, for whatever, um, for fitness, you also should have an expert for the brain. And not so much to put them on the red sofa, and holding hands for the players because most of them won't do that anyway. Um, and for me, it's about helping the players to that the brain should should assist the body and not work against it. You know, so this is what it's about: that the players and even the coaching staff, everybody in in in, in our team, should think in the right way. You know, and we all know that it, what it's about. Whenever we speak about football, we know that the major part is up here. So what do you think? How do you analyze the situation? Uh, and therefore, I'm very happy to have Sasha on board. Uh, as I said, he's a former second division player. He's hands-on. He is not caught of sort of too much working in the, the in the theory. He's, he's hands-on. And uh, whenever he was, uh, he, he's part of every training session. And uh, having worked together with him in Leipzig, I know uh, that we could benefit a lot from him. It's also, as I said, about coaching the coaches. Of course, the coaches have to allow that. 
Um, and um, and for me, it's uh, for me, it's vital that uh, on top level that you should that you should, that you should have the best possible person on this job. Ralph Dawson. Hi, Ralph. Um, how have you found the the confidence levels of the players since you've been in? Because obviously, it's been a difficult start to the season. Um, have you found that the confidence is something that you've had to repair since you've been in, or, or have you found that they've they've kind of embraced the fresh start under you? As Nemanja said, I mean, if you win games, uh, uh, it's the best, uh, the best way, the best tool to 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 regain and gain confidence again. And uh, uh, in the last four games, uh, the team won three of them and had one draw. So we just need to keep going the momentum, and uh, it's about gaining conf confidence, believing in the way that we are playing. Um, the, the players have to buy in. Uh, I can tell them whatever I want. Uh, I need to convince them. I have to get into their hearts, into their brains, into their blood, whatever. So that that make that they make my idea of football to their own. This is what it's about. Uh, and well, I think the first step has been taken. And now it's about the next steps. Tomorrow, Saturday at Norwich, Tuesday at Brantford, and then the last one before Christmas at home against against Brighton. One well, last question for Alan Kuhn. Ja, Herr Nick, hallo. Zwei Fragen. Was haben Sie von der Beziehung zu äh, Wagner? Und wie sehen Sie die Young Boys im äh, aktuellen Formzustand? Ja, David äh, kenne ich natürlich schon lange. Äh, wir haben damals in Hoffenheim, ich glaube es war 2009 oder 2010, habe ich ihn damals nach Hoffenheim geholt als unseren U23-Trainer, als Trainer der zweiten Mannschaft. Dort haben wir auch, glaube ich, ein oder zwei Jahre dann, äh, ja, wenn man so will, im gleichen Verein zusammengearbeitet. Und seitdem habe ich natürlich auch seine Entwicklung verfolgt, äh, auch über Huddersfield, über Schalke, äh, und jetzt auch der Wechsel zu, zu, zu Young Boys. Im Moment, glaube ich, ist die Formkurve jetzt nicht gerade ganz weit oben. In der Tabelle sind sie, glaube ich, aktuell Vierter mit äh, einigen Punkten Abstand schon auf die Spitze, auf den FC Zürich äh, und auch auf Basel. Und äh, insofern ja, ist das im Moment zwar so, aber wie ich vorher schon gesagt habe, das Hinspiel haben sie gewonnen, 3-2 gegen uns. Und, äh, Deswegen haben wir da auch noch was gut zu machen. Wir wollen das Spiel morgen gewinnen und äh, wissen, dass wir dafür aber auch, egal wer da morgen jetzt auf unserer Seite auf dem Platz steht, dass wir dafür auch als Mannschaft wieder auf dem höchstmöglichen Niveau auch selber uns präsentieren müssen. Danke sehr,